Hey buddy, how are you? Gary, third week in here on the British Barbers Association, Barbers Arms. Are we all well? Have you had a good week? Yeah, pretty good mate. Uh, sun's still shining, so that's, uh, that's a plus point, isn't it? So, been really busy though, work with, uh, been up to work, so you have to go in, check the shops and make sure everything's all right there. Done a little bit of work up there. Done a lot of education, online education. Big shout out, while we're just mentioning this, can I have a big shout out to all the guys that we worked with on Wednesday in the States. Um, Gent's place, it's a great group of people. We have 50 learners online, so they were fantastic. So yeah, I've been really busy, mate. How about you? No, I've been cracking up all week. <laughs> you are, I tried phone you, your phone. You don't answer it at the moment. I've phoned you twice this week and he just no. says the user is busy or is he, he just cutting me off. No, no, no. Honestly, he's been really busy with interviews and live. I did a live one for India today, which is always nice. Great, great people in India. I love watching. We've got a lot of Indian people as well going to be tuning in either tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, first of all, thanks to everybody who's been watching this as well. This is our third show and I think it's been really good. Hope that you all guys have enjoyed it as well. I think we've had over... 18,000 views so far on the two shows that we've done so it's been really good tonight we've got a great great bar tonight we've got uh, some great guests uh you've got one guest that's coming up shortly gary aren't you do you want to just say who's going to be coming on yeah we've got the the fantastic joth from saddles barbers coming with us tonight he's going to be joining us about 8 15 and then you've got a colleague of yours as well joining us haven't you yeah, we've got Anna Elliott uh, joining us from Docs in Shanghai, which I think is going to be really good for people who are listening in or who do watch this afterwards to see how life is after C19 um, in terms of setting back up in salon, uh, in a barber shop, uh, finding out what's happening in the barber shop, what's the restrictions, what's happening in and around the bars, the restaurants, just the general feel. I think that'd be great for people who are tuning in and listening to us. Um, you know, what, what, can be expected. I know we're going to talk as well about some information that we've got. Listen, all of us, I'm sure, most of it, because I've had it loads today, we all read a, a little bit of this horrible Sun newspaper saying 182 bad hair days. Um, I think everybody's had a little bit of a downer in our industry today, thinking that that could be a little bit of a scaremonger. There's no evidence, there's no government said that hairdressing is not going to go back for six months. Until we hear it from the government on our traffic light system or sectors going back, and no point panicking. Let's just keep doing the right thing. Let's keep it nice and safe. We're obviously getting through the curve of it. And until things are official, don't panic. You know, I'm the biggest panicker in the world. I'm the biggest worry in the world. And, and I, have to, I read that this morning. I thought, oh, here we go. But then lots of phone calls today from different barbers and different salons saying to me, do you think this is going to be you know, is it true? And I'm like, it's the Sun newspaper, you know? Yeah. I said, I was going to play for Man U in my 40s, but that was a load of bollocks as well. So, you know, <laughs> who knows? I, I totally agree, mate. I mean, I don't put a lot out on social media, as you know. I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not that tight, really. But I have had to put a couple of posts out this week, purely and simply, because of the rubbish floating around, really. We've got some great live, uh, you know, Modern Barber had something on, they were really good, put a lot of people at ease. And then we've got stuff like this happening, but and like the traffic light system that everybody was pushing around, that we were getting back on the 11th of May. I, I actually had to put that down and say, look, just look to your government sources, your official sources, don't go looking at gossip and tabloids because it does you no good whatsoever. Yeah, well, you've said we've got some great lineups anyway. We've got Joff coming on from Savills. And we've got Anna Elliott coming straight out of Shanghai. Um, she's going to get a few extra hours kip while we, we're doing it, because I think she has to get up at like 2.30 in the morning, as our director does as well, Trevor. So thanks to everybody whose uh, efforts are uh, uh, contributing towards Barber's Arms as well. Just a quick one while you're all watching as well, um, and you're watching this, it's free membership at the BBA. So have a go on the BBA Facebook, and uh, it's all free membership. And whilst we're talking about some of the standards and some of the things that might come in in PP, um, I'm sure that the BBA are going to put stuff out there as well and help you guys as barbers and hairdressing salons to give you some of the, the share our wisdom with you of some of the stuff, not just the alive, but what you can read afterwards as well. So I'm sure that'll all come to you as well. So stay tuned on the BBA site as well. So, thanks. Gary. Thanks for that, mate. Anyway, 
What are we drinking tonight? What well, we I've, I've got Italian tonight. I'm just having a, a little Peroni. Um, and then I, I got myself some really nice ciders. I'm not a cider drinker, but I'd seen, I had some a, a, a couple of years ago called Aspel Premier Cru. And um, it, it's, it's kind of nice, but it's dangerous. It's, uh, it's called the One Bottle. Is, is, that, is that what you had uh, on your birthday when we were in Barnsley? Uh, no, I think that tequila nailed me that night, proper nail me. I couldn't even get my leg up taxi. I mean, I struggle sometimes walking anyway. But all coordination. You know when Anthony Joshua got it with uh, Andy Ruiz and he did his acolibra? That's what fucking happened to me. My acolibra had gone. Couldn't get my foot in taxi. I blamed you, though. I did blame you. <laughs> Drifting with you, starting early on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, it was, it was, it's like a comedy sketch. Me and your mother try and get you in the taxi. I mean, how oh, bad is that? It, it is bad. It is bad. I do apologise. But I am 50, so I am allowed to, to do that. I mean, you'll remember 10 years ago, and it was your 50th, that, you know, you struggled to get in and out of taxis on your 50th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Thanks for that, mate. Thanks very much. Well, I'm it's, on the uh, IPA all the way from uh, the Suds from America, and we've got some special as well today. We've got some... Fireball cinnamon whiskey that I'm going to give you tonight, so uh, we're going to have some shots with that. Wow! I've got, I've, I've, I've been quite organised tonight. Depending on how the night goes, can yeah. you see that? Yeah. I've got three sizes of shot glasses there. That, that's for a bad night, not a bad middle, and then that's a training glass. So I, I bought you the training glass just, just in case. Have you got your tequila at hand or not? I've got my tequila ready. Um, I, 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 Trevor's just said to us earlier today when we were talking through tonight's show about how we were knocking the tequilas back last week and we weren't even prompted to take a shot. But obviously, it is a Friday night. We are having a beer. I actually felt last Friday night when we had the guests coming in. Uh, Gary were a great guest. Gary Jackson over in Ireland. So I hope he's watching tonight. Top guy, Gary. Can't wait to see us all together because what's going to be fantastic is that when we go to an exhibition or a show, if we're doing something together, that we've <clears throat> probably for the last three or four weeks just spoke virtually on, on these kind of Zooms and Facebooks. So I think when we get together, it's going to be a right good tear up. I'm oh, really yeah, looking forward to it. Anyway, cheers, everybody, and cheers, everybody who's watching. Cheers, Ross. I know you sent some messages, and we've had quite a few people join us as well. So we've got Ali McCann, Gary Jackson, Matt Cono, Alison Titterton Bailey, or is it Bailey Titterton? Really lovely girl. She's a great, great friend of ours. But Cheers, mate. All the very best. Friday night. Nice. We're getting all these uh, uh, these drinks coming up as well. Um, I don't know what it is. You know, what is it with people wanting us to drink live on, on these Facebook stuff? I, I hope people are drinking at home. Send your drinks in tonight, guys. We did it first week round, but tell us what you're all drinking. Be nice to see what you're all drinking. Yeah. Um, they, want you, they want to see you fall off your stool. That's what's up. Well, you know, I never really get drunk, really, in, in only very close family and friends. So when we go to <laughs> exhibitions or I'm about, I try not. So that's why I sneak away from you about half past nine, ten o'clock at night. <laughs> so I, have to, I have to do a proper job through there at exhibitions. I can't, I can't do it anymore. I'm, I'm getting too old. I'm getting too old. So this is the nearest thing that we're going to get, I think, definitely. Tra train body. Um, as you said earlier, we've got some great uh, guests on. And I'd like to reiterate as well for... Because it takes some setting up as well, just, you know, working over different countries. And I'd like to say thank you again for Gary Jackson and Marion uh, Northern Ireland. They, they were great sports last week. I haven't managed to ch check in with them this week either. So, but uh, I will do, definitely. But um, I had a really good night. I came, out, I came off last week's, you know, I felt, I really felt like I'd been out for an hour. You know what I mean? It yeah, really, I... I I had some calls backing up when I, when I come off, people have been watching and talking to us and they, they were like saying, Sim, I've had a beer with you tonight. And so obviously, look, it's nice and light. Great idea by Jackie and Trevor to fetch this up. And uh, I think it's really working. Um, any questions that you, while you're watching guys tonight, if you want to fire your questions in, uh, we'll, me and Gary will hopefully try to share our wisdom or what's happening right now and what the mood is of whatever questions you throw at us. The great chat today with the guys over in India. Um, and I got kind of excited today because at the minute, the only show that I've got actually that looks like half concrete is the professional beauty show in Delhi. And then I'm going to stay on in Delhi for 15 days doing a tour of like um, Calcutta, Mumbai, 
uh, Bangalore. So it kind of come off today. I felt a little bit normal, like you'd had a, week, a, a meeting that, you know, we're coming out to do a show there. So I, I kind of felt a little bit normal today. Um, so. do, you know, do you know what? It, it actually shows. I mean, I know, I know you, sometimes you, you know, when you're locked away like we are and you travel so much, I know we've covered this in the past and you travel so much and, even even when you're home, you, you're in hotels, aren't you? You know, I know most of the guys who, who watched us the last couple of weeks know that. But you know, when you when you have a good conversation or you have a great meeting or you do something like this, it actually does lift your spirits a bit, doesn't it? It lifts your day. And I can tell today that you, you know you are bouncing around today. Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, we had um, we had a family quiz last night. Uh, my daughter set one up on Zoom, and um, it were in three, three, 30 questions. But like you, you did your scores. I, I was winning after the first ten because they were all sport. And then I think I got one or two out of ten on the next ones. And then the general knowledge one, I got one out of ten. So, uh, but it was nice because when we put the phone on, it, it like we'd done the NHS clapping outside, and my mum had put some music on outside for all the the street here, and everybody were out clapping and cheering. And then we went and did that quiz and. You kind of pass the night. I think you've, you've got to keep yourselves busy. You've got to keep yourselves really proactive. And again, one of the things that came up today was, whilst you're now all, I, I, it's really stepped it up. Everywhere I speak to now, it's not about what, what, how many beers you've had or if you've been sunbathing or if you've done a bit of decorate. I think everybody's talking about when we get back. What's it going to be like? What we're going to do in this business? What do we need to wear PPE? What are we going to open longer hours? So everybody has spoken to I think the business side of it seems to be at right at the forefront of everybody's thoughts now. Everybody's getting geared up to think we're not going to be far away. And when I spoke to the guys today in India, I just felt that they were all the, the very same, you know, same set. Uh, we've got Colin who's on some IPA. Colin Orton who's an IPA, same as you, Gaz, one of your fans. Ellie's on the wine again. She loves that wine, Ellie, doesn't she? <laughs> uh, that's Colin. You know Colin Horton on the IPA. That's the guy who I shaved on on your stage with Bob last year. Sorry Very about nice. that. Sorry about that, Colin. <laughs> he, didn't, he, he didn't charge you, did he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome to Saban and uh, Donna as well. They joined us as well. Uh, any minute now, we are hopefully going to get Joth Davis with us back on, on uh, the barber's arms. He, we're just waiting for him to be counted in. Uh, Trevor, who's working in the middle of the night in Australia, is in Adelaide at the moment. He's behind the scenes and, and counting him in. So in a little while, we, as soon as we get the nod, we're going to bring uh, Joff in and we're going to see his perspective as well. Uh, just from uh, our point of view then, um, you know when you talk about you're in touch with a lot of barbers and I take it they're all over the world as well, not just in this country, but yeah. just generally local in Barnsley. What's the, what's the actual feeling there? What, are, are you getting a lot of people that are doing dodgy haircuts or is, the, is, is everybody coping pretty well or what, what's happening? Um, I think pretty much everything's clutched. The, 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 I've not heard of anybody... You know, not that I'm aware of that's going around cutting hair. Um, I know it's raised its ugly head a few times. But I drove through town centre a couple of days ago and I was saying to, to a friend of mine, I said, it's good that there was no one about. That every shop yeah. was shut. The banks were shut. And it's a proper lockdown. Obviously, the supermarkets and things like that. But they've got it organised. You know, there's queues and everybody's a meeting between. It's one in, one out. So, look, I think we've done everything we can up here in Yorkshire. Uh, certainly from Barnes's point of view, anyway. So... I, yes, I, I, all right. I think I think we're the same. I think uh, we're, we're in North Staffordshire, South Cheshire. We've got shops in in both areas, Staffordshire Moorland. Uh, so we're in a lot of market towns as well. So, and I think we we I think everybody's you know the the the, the feeling of community is is come across, and I think it's it's you know we, we we're doing our best. I think from a a point of view of, of central government, I've said it before. I think they're coping with it pretty well. I think they're trying to treat businesses fairly. And, you know, whether it'll, it'll be a different story if we're, you know, much, much longer. Uh, I know some factories are going back, aren't they? Jaguar and Aston Martin and, and some of these other firms are going back. I notice B&Q is starting to reopen some of their stores as well. I just hope that all this lockdown that we've all done diligently 
you know, just because we start opening, everybody doesn't think it's a free for all and start wandering around again. You know, that that's my only fear. No, but, no. I agree with you as well, because when I saw the pictures of people at being queued, they weren't going in for essentials, they were coming out with bastard garden gnomes and stuff like that, so <laughs> it was like, uh, hang on a minute, is that essential, uh, garden gnomes and walking out with picket fences on their heads and stuff like that, it's almost like, I think there's a certainty about people as well that nobody spent a lot of money, they've only spent it on groceries, so I think people are uh, uh, used to spending money, you know. Um, I think every time I went out of house, I, I used to buy some clothing or some shoes or whatever. And uh, you know, it's probably four or five, five weeks since six weeks since I've bought any any clothing. And it's, uh, you know, I was asked the question as well, and this is it because I've said, you know, a lot of people's got used to cutting their hair at home, and you know, it's going to be a big change. No, I, I disagree. I think when we do get back up, what you've got to all of you do, we're all scared, we're all nervous. You've got to hold your nerve. What we can't have this weekend is everybody going out and spoiling it, and then we see them figures surge back up because everybody's been mixing. Hold your nerve, keep cool, keep calm, like we do, and carry on. And let's get it sorted out properly. But I do think people are fed up of just shaving their hair off. People are fed up of, you know, just doing their own haircuts. You know, I, I saw uh, the lad who had gone on and made a bit of a... Um, probably he'll look back, Michael Douglas, and look at his comments about box colour on TV, saying they were the same as what they used in salons. He, he'll probably regret that comment. But he made up for it yesterday, because whilst he was on yesterday, he was like, really said, it's better to go to your hairdresser, and you can't do your highlights home. You've got to go to salons. So he kind of fetched it back to him, bless him. And I know he made a mistake, and, he, and I know, you know, it's difficult sometimes when you're pushed into TV studios, and sometimes people are in your ear telling you what to do and how to say it. Um, but he made up for it yesterday and I think he was spot on when we open up they're going to want to come in and have a proper job done a proper skin fade a proper lining in you know they're going to want to have a real good good haircut and uh, there's no better place than a barbershop or a salon it, it isn't just that though is it I mean it's about going out and actually spending time with for yourself as well and meeting the credit if it was just all about the haircut and you just needed a haircut People wouldn't come to other people, wouldn't they? You know, they wouldn't come to specific barbers. You know, we wouldn't be as popular as we are. It isn't all just about the haircut, is it? It's about spending yeah. that time and having a having a little me time. But it's the crack. You know, we've got between five and six barbers in every location, and the banter that it brings with it, and what you're talking about, how you're talking, it's fantastic. It's great. So I think it, it isn't just about shaving somebody's hair off, is it? It's just you just got to be, like you say, you just got to hold your nerve a little bit and just wait for that, that influx. But I think a lot of the time when we're talking about, you know, just giving somebody a little bit of a nudge or whatever, when people feel quite isolated and they're only relying on social media or what's on the news link or, you know, you're buying a newspaper, you're almost taking it for God. You know, what, when, it, when it's in the papers, you're, a lot of people are like, they like sheep, aren't they? they? They follow. I'm not. I'm not disrespecting anybody, but sometimes you've got to take stuff with a pinch of salt, haven't you? You know what I mean. It's, yeah. You can't it's believe difficult. everything you read. You read. It's difficult when you're cooped up, and it's difficult. Yeah. You know, a lot of people who have been thrown together that you normally work in six, seven days a week. You see, you miss it for a few hours and stuff like. That. All of a sudden, you, you, you're together full time and. You know, the kids are at home and there's the schooling issues. You, look, look we, we've done well. You've done five weeks of it nearly. So just keep keep doing it. You know, the more you keep your, your nerve now and keep calm, the quicker it will be done. You're, you're definitely getting over the curve of it. And we've just got to keep doing the right thing. And when we, I think we're going to be great tonight. I'm really looking forward to, to listening to Anna anyway. She's one of our t week team out in China. And she's got three beautiful salons in China. Uh, but she's in Shanghai. It's the, it's the epicenter. It's like London. It's, you know, it's, She's going to give us a great view of what's going to what we're going to expect. How's it going to be when you get back? It's going to be real life experiences here. Uh, yeah. We've got Dan Ricks as well. Dan's on with us. He's having some Captain's Morgan. Ah, uh, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to have a big shot with Dan because Dan's a good friend of mine and his dad's loving Robert. Good out, sir. All the very best. Love yeah, you, good guys. Really good all, guys. all the best to your dad. Right. Do you want to invite our first guest then on to Barbara's Arms here on Friday the 24th of April 2020? I will. So we've got a barber of 31 years. 
He's based in Sheffield. He's got a really successful barber shop in, um, in the centre of Sheffield named Savills. We all know him as Joth. He works for Wall as well. He knows um, uh, he's a global team member and he's also principal educator for the men's method for Wall. Know him very well. Uh, welcome, Joth. Are we there? Can you hear me, Joth? Have you got your sound on, Joth? Switch your audio on, Joth, I think. Can you hear me? There we go, mate. There I'm we here. go. You're in. You're in the house. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, buddy? You've dressed I'm all right. How are you? I feel really underdressed now. Well, you know me, dressed for the occasion. I haven't had an opportunity to get dressed up for him for a week, so I thought, well, you know. If I'm going to go and drink in the bar, I better get dressed up. Have you had oh, as well? That, I've, I've slipped it all and everything. I mean, it's, been, it's grown so much. Oh, yeah, I can see. It was when you were sitting back at your bar there. It just yeah, it looked, in. I thought you'd done a... Uh, it looks like I've shaved my head, but it's not. There is actually a hair there. Nice one. You all right? You had, a, you had a, a, a good week? Yeah, I've had a great week, to be honest. I mean... I mean, I know it's, it's tough for a lot of people, but actually, I've, I've kind of really enjoyed the pause. It's kind of made me take stock of a lot of things, and I've obviously spent so much time with the family, which is really nice, you know, the three of us. And um, we moved out into the country about 18 months ago, so we bought this old cottage that we've been sort of fixing up, so we've had loads of stuff to do to keep me busy, so... I reckon I've been busier now than I was when I was at work. I've been working flat out from, uh, you know, seven o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock at night. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm all good. And I'm going to join you in a Peroni. This is the first. This is the first drink I've had since the beginning of February. Yeah, because well, you lost some weight, haven't you? I lost nearly a stone and a half. Wow. You you, 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 you couldn't, last time I saw you, you couldn't afford to lose a stone off. Anyway, you're well, amazing. The thing is, I'm what they call skinny fat. I know how I you feel. I look like I'm skinny because I'm lanky, but actually I was carrying loads of weight around my gut. And, that, and then the last time in particular, because I, 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 you know, I love wearing these double-breasted suits. And the last time Simon and I went away, actually, when we went to, uh, to Turin, you know, and I had that bright yellow double thing. I know it to go on that massive stage. It was huge. It was like a 5,000 seat stage recording thing that we did for the whole 100 year anniversary. And I was breathing in the whole time. Just about putting it up. But then as soon as I came off stage, I had to let the buttons out. And then, <laughs> I've got up to nearly, I went up to nearly 14 stone. That is, much? So you... I'm back down to about uh, 12 and a half now. You fat bastard. Not anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. I, hey, can you imagine me? That last time me and Simon were 14 stone, mate. I'd, I'd take that all day long, I want to tell you. Yeah, but Thanks. don't know me not look good when I'm, that's, when I'm a lanky. No, I look like I'm a lanky streak of piss, but I'm not. Well, I am now, but I wasn't. Can I, can I just say as well, if copacetic products made a bar, that's what it would look like, wouldn't it? Did you, did you pick that on purpose? I did, yeah, yeah. Well, I tried to find a nice little Art Deco speakeasy cocktail type bar. Fantastic. Yeah. You, you tell, I can tell as well that you made an effort there to pick the right bar. Yeah, I'm asked Trevor to get us a new bar for next week. We need to up it now, Gaz. Well, you know. What? What? I, I, I don't know about you, but this is my house. I, I can't change that. If I can't move, I can't. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll show you. I can flip it to uh, to my house, I think. If I can show you. I'll pop you into uh, where my house is. Here. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Sat in the library. <laughs> you said it was a cottage. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's your cottage. cottage. So that, so that, so that your bar area, Jot, is there, is there a charge to go in that bar or is it a free bar? It's a free bar. No door charge? No charge. <clears throat> nice. Nice. So, Joff, I, I have I have used you as a bit of a reference because obviously we speak anyway, just generally, more or less every other day. But I have used you as reference when we've been talking to barbers. Just give us a talk us through a little bit of what you've been kind of working on in terms of the business, your business. What have you thought that you you know you're going to implement when you get back? Have you introduced? Have you have you got your staff involved in any of them decision makings? And what kind of decisions are you making in terms of services, hours, that kind of stuff? Just talk, talk us through it. Well, I mean, I, I, I kind of saw the writing on the wall, I think, re really early on. And uh, so before we were told to shut, we, we shut. I kind of made it. I really made it a mental decision, I think, at the beginning of the week before we were actually, before they told everybody to shut. So I think like most barbershops, we worked up until that Saturday. And then at that point, I was already like, well, we're definitely not going back, you know, to work now. It just wasn't safe. So, and then watching what's happened with everybody else and some of the other countries that, that uh, and, and how bad they were that went into lockdown earlier than us, it just sort of gave me a good insight into kind of what's going to happen when we do go back. Because, you know, as, as everybody keeps saying, we're not going to be able to just go back and work the way we are. So uh, I started to put some things in place. Uh, and we've got obviously like everybody's got a group WhatsApp for, for work. So I started messaging everybody on the group WhatsApp. And then I have another one just for the managers. So I had a meeting with the managers about, I think probably about a second week into lockdown and said, look, these are the things that I think we should put in place. If you've got any other things that, that you think about, then obviously come back to me and let let me know. So they came up with some ideas and I said, look, you know, in a couple of days time, at this time, we'll have a, you know, a Zoom meeting or I think we just did it via WhatsApp, video call, the three of us. And uh, we discussed, you know, what, what we were going to do. And so there was a number of things, obviously, masks and gloves was, was the first thing that came to mind. And, uh, you know, whether we do some kind of PPE apron as well. I'm not sure whether that's totally necessary, really, but uh, it might be something that we look at if, if, if the availability is right and if we, if we think it is, but definitely masks and gloves. Now, we've got a big barbershop, so there's 10, 10 barber's chairs, and, uh, and then I have three assistants, and then there's myself and, and Annabelle, and, and uh, so there's like 15 of us in there, which I think is probably going to be too many people. Uh, for when we go back, I think they're going to start saying probably groups of less than 10 or groups of less than 15. And we don't know for sure yet, but I wanted to try and put some things in place. Um, but on the upside of having the big shop is that it means we've got the space to create in between the chairs because I've got six stations down one side and four stations down the other. So if I remove half the team, and so rather than having six barbers down one side, we have three down one side and two on the other. There's more than two meters space between chairs, which mm. helps, to, helps to create social distancing. And I say helps because, you know, we have probably seen more people in a day than most doctors did that week before lockdown. You know, with, with 10 barbers in, working flat out, and a bench that holds 20 or 30 people, 40 people more if we're a walking service, but we've been appointments now for, for some time, maybe six, seven years. Um, it does seem a little bit daft to try and create two meter distance between the chairs when we're in such close proximity with the barbers anyway. But I want to, to first and foremost protect uh, our team, but also then in turn uh, help to uh, make our customers feel safe. And if they're coming in, and they feel like they're not being sat next to someone too close as well as the barber cutting and hair, then they're more likely going to want to come in. So we will, we will start using our booking system to email out and telling them about the procedures that we take in place. And that will be half the team. So we'll have five barbers in rather than 10 barbers in. They'll be on rotation. And instead of doing 10 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock at night, we'll probably do, you know, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning till 8, 9 o'clock. 10 o'clock at night if, if, if the need be and we'll do a split shift that way whether that's they 
come in in the morning and then the, the other team comes in in the afternoon or whether they just do three days on, three days off, which so, is to be deemed at the moment. But yeah. then also we've got the problem because the bench is right down the middle of the shop. Now, so mm. if you have people waiting on the bench because yeah. we then really close to them. So there'll be no waiting on the bench. The door will be locked and people will only enter when we allow them to enter and we'll have an electronic temperature device to te test everybody's temperature on the way in. But not only the, uh, the, the customers, but also the team. So on arrival, the team every morning will have their temperature checked as well. We, I, would you introduce things like hand sanitizers on every unit for your staff and for clients, hand sanitizers in reception? Yeah, I definitely a hand sanitizer in reception and anybody that walks through the door customer-wise will, will have to do that and, and, and any team that walks through the door first thing in the morning will do that. But I don't think we need a hand sanitizer on every station because once the customers, you know, put that, they're not really going to touch anything because, the, because of the other thing that we're going to put in place, which I'll go to in a minute, um, because the barbers are either going to wear gloves or they're going to constantly wash their hands. No, Would you be like us as well a bit, Jothies? You know, when we're listening to like on, on our group now, we've just had Shane McKenzie uh, join us from New Zealand, which is really early. He's come on to watch you. So hi, Shane. Thanks for getting up so early in New Zealand. Okay. Would you would you do things like, would you look at, you know, Jack Ludlow's just saying that they go back to, in Norway next week and he's going to share their protocols. When Anna comes on tonight, she's going to, would you, before you make everything a final decision, would you listen to what's happening in other countries or are you just going to go down the way of, you know, this is how I think we're going to do it for Savills. Or would you try and listen to what other people are saying and maybe introduce a bit of that as well? Well, I mean, I think, I think everybody's using the common sense. So I think everybody's going to be doing the same thing. They're all going to be doing, not everybody might do temperature checks. I don't know, but I just think we should do that. It just for the safety of the team, but also to make the customers feel happier about coming in thinking, well, look, We've got the email, we've seen the procedures that they're putting in place. I actually feel comfortable about going in now because our customers normally know us as being a very, very busy barbershop with 10 barbers in and maybe 10 or 15, 20 waiting, even when we're doing appointments as well. And if they think we're just going to go in and operate the same way, then they're going to think differently. So, yes, on one hand, I am going to listen to what's been happened. I mean, I did see a message pop up. When I was listening to your chat earlier on, uh, there was a guy from Italy. I didn't. His name's gone now, but I think they said they're going back 18 May, I think, something like that. It's a barbershop. So I'll be looking out to see what's happening in Norway and see what's happening in Italy, just to get a feel for it. But really, we're going to be told what to do by the government, aren't we? Really, let's face it. They're going to say, you know, hairdressers, dentists, and whatever shop owners are going to go back first. Restaurants and and bars can go back, but limited space. You know, all these sort of things that are going to put in place. So until we hear that, we don't really know what we have to do. But I know what I want to do for the safety of our team and for the safety of our customers and to make our customers feel safe, to make them want to come in. Because I, I, I worry that there will be a lot of customers that probably won't come in because they might be worried about the environment. So if we are telling them about our environment and how that's going to be, it'll make them feel more comfortable. I mean, one of the other things that, that, that I want to do is to extend our appointment times. We currently do sort of half an hour and 45 minute appointments, depending on the haircut or the service. Um, everything will be 45 minutes now. Uh, our prices will go up accordingly because we're going to have to, uh, obviously we'll have a lot more expenditure with PPE and uh, we may even go down the disposable towel route. If we don't go down the disposable towel route, the towels will obviously have to be washed at a much higher temperature as well, and all that sort of comes into play. Um, but also, uh, apart from the expenditure, and, and I would see this as, a, as, as possibly even just telling our customers this is a temporary price raise until things get back to normal. But I, I'll, I'll cross that bridge when we come to it a little bit, because I don't want to sort of say anything to our customers too early about that, other than, we have to raise our prices because of all these things that are going to come into play. But also the time is not only for the fact that it's going to take a bit longer because we're going to be doing fix-up haircuts and we're going to be dealing with longer hair and everybody's going to still want to come in and have a skin face, so it might take a little bit longer. But it's, the, it's after the customer leaves, I want time where there's not another customer waiting to go straight in the chair to clean all the chair down properly, clean all the equipment down properly, disinfect everything. All that takes time. 
Yeah, it does. Yeah. Hey, can yeah. I can I just interrupt there? Just just one second. It's really, something really important that Rossi's just brought up. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> well, so on, on the uh, so this 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 was given to me by by one of my neighbours. This is I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Yeah. Lovely. Prize fighter. Irish whiskey aged in American rye barrels. You need to have oh look at that for a shot glass. What? Listen, just ju ju just a quick and as well, uh, Joth. I mean, you know, we're in a similar situation. You know, you've got a lot of people depending on you for their livelihood and you know mortgages, rent, whatever it is. And I'm guessing all your guys are employed. Putting all these measures in place, you know, we want to do this. We do it. We you, you do it for the safety of your staff and and for the clients as well. We're we're almost doing these things. We're almost halving our income, aren't we? As well, you know, if you if you furloughing or if you if you have it only having five barbers on at a time. I, I've know, I know you shot very well. Uh, you know, you your bench system. So. If the weather's inclement and you're asking clients to wait out, there's all these problems that, you know, because we, even though you're having appointment systems, people turn up for their appointments early and you're asking them to wait outside. But from a, how, how are you going to pick what staff work, what days, if you're going to actually ask them not to come in or? Well, yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm, I've, I've spoken to the managers about what, what, I would like to do and got feedback from them and we all think it's a good idea so we're now kind of waiting to hear what the government say and what's happening in other countries to get an idea of what's going on to whether we need to go to that extreme of only having five on five off five on now that i'm, I'm doing that in a way with the opening hours and opening sundays as well which we wouldn't normally do so it won't affect anybody's money they're all going to earn the same so I've got some barbers that, that, that travel from York every day, so it'd probably be better if they came probably across together. And, you know, we can, and, and obviously, because they're, they're going to have to get the train as well, so I'll have to look into the train times because they might be limited as well. So it's going to be based around a lot of transport issues as well and seeing what's happening there and what times they can come and what times they, they can stay till. So... I, I'm, I was going to kind of wait till the end of this week just to see how things were going. And I think they'll probably be maybe making some announcements in the next probably week, a week and a half, I would have thought anyway. <laughs> and then we can sort of tweak what we've got down on paper to make it work. Now, our, our, our appointment system has always been pretty good. You know, occasionally we have some people turn up late. Occasionally we have some people turn up early. Most of the people stay on, on time. I think given the fact that we've got most of our customers, I would say probably 80% of our customers on our database anyway, maybe, maybe if not more, we could be mailing out to those people now, you know, while they're all at home, while they're sat in front of the computers and they'll get all this information. We can use the social media to make them push to go to the emails and have a look at it, make sure it's not in the junk box so they realize, you know, these are the hours that we now open. You have to come at a specific time. You have to be here early. And if the weather is a bit rubbish outside and we've got space and we can, you know, make some space at the front of the shop where they can sit and it's not going to get anybody's way, then we'll do that. But if we have to buy umbrellas and they have to stand outside in the cold for five minutes, well, then so be it, you know. But we have said to them, come on time, you know. You know, even if you have to sit in the car park in the car, if you're travelling by car and then just leave your car a couple of minutes before your appointment, by the time you come up, you know, if the weather's bad, you're only going to be stood outside for a, for a few minutes. Yeah. You know, we can make it work. I know we can it's it's just fine-tuning everything. Would you, you know, like we're all really good at social media. Oh, sorry, you're all good at social media. Um, one of the things that I think we've been good at, we've been very quick at snapping shots of uh, nice styles that we've done in this salon, team all together, making it look as pretty as what we all want it to look. Would you think that it's going to happen where we're going to put some social media about what PPE we're going to have in our, what, for our clients to look in and say, this business is geared up to look after our staff safety and your safety. These are the measures. Your stylist will wear a mask, gloves, apron, disposable gowns, will hand sanitize. Just a list of things that if people are feeling a little bit uncomfortable about going back to a barbershop, they'll be looking around. 
is that something you consider doing, doing social media and, and, and almost PR in your business? Well, absolutely, yeah. We, we, will be, we will be doing, we will be telling our customers, we'll, first and foremost, we're going to hit everybody by email because most of our customers are, are targeted that way anyway. We have a lot of customers following us through social media, but our social media is really followed by more barbers and hairdressers than it is by our customers. Yeah. So we will we will attack it by you know by Facebook, by Instagram, by Twitter, but also more importantly by by our database system because that's going direct to the client, and they will get an email with everything with everything in play that we're doing, temperature checks and all these things. And if you don't feel well or if you've had any of these symptoms, please don't turn up at the shop because if you turn up and I check your temperature, I'll be asking you to leave. You know, and it's the same thing if 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 one of our team comes in in the morning. And he gets his temperature checks in the morning, and his temperature is is, uh, is not right. I may ask uh, him or her to sort of to stay at home. But again, we need to take some guidance on that because I think that's yeah. a bit of a grey area in terms of taking the temperature and is that the right thing to do and is it showing you? So I, I'm I'm just looking to see what what's happening with that. There's some dodgy, dodgy temperature gauges out there as well, isn't there? You know, some of these that you can buy for twenty quid and you stick it to people's oh, forehead. I'm I'm going to get one. I'm not going to buy a cheap one. I'll buy one that I know that's it's going to be right. We've got good reviews and everything. Otherwise, what's the point in buying it? You end up well, might have more people away than you actually want. Hey, hey Simon. Yes. You know, when you're asking about what they're going to look like, is it because you like dressing in scrubs and playing doctors and nurses or not? Do you know, do you know what? I, I actually, you know, I've got a little bit of a, I, I like the clinical feel about it. I, I love going into my dentist and like nicking his masks and that when he's not looking. And <laughs> other, numbing, other numbing substances off him. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I bet, you, I, bet, I bet you go in stages with this. Stethoscope and everything, don't you? It's not going to worry me, Gaz, doing a seminar with a mask on, because I can do that silent Tourette's underneath my mask. <laughs> Geoff knows all about that. Unfortunately, yeah, we Geoff... feel like a ventriloquist. Nobody yeah, knows where it's coming Geoff... from. Geoff... Geoff, being part of the wall team, he's, he's travelled quite a lot with me, so he knows that some of the pressures that I'm under, but also as well, he's seen me give the real motivational speeches, but he's also seen me... Uh, when things aren't going right, it's not a question of that I wait or I kind of wait, you, you go straight in. So a mask might be good for me because it'll protect a lot of people from some like terrible tarine. I can say it under my breath, but you know what you're doing. Uh, you know, you get Geoff, just, to, just on a bit lighter note, you know, when we've been asking guests to come on, uh, in your experience, whether this has been out travelling, um, like you missed the Lube story, can you remember the Lube when you were outside Mr. Lube's in Canada? Oh, um, yeah. What's, what's, give us a funny story, whether it's a client or from traveling, what's funny, funny stories that you've got? Uh, oh my God, I've been trying to think about this, you know, for, for a while, because there's so many, and, and so many of them, they're like, they're quite close to the bone, some of them. They're trying to think of some where, where they're a bit tame or something where we can sort of get away with, but I don't know, like, I think the ones, well, you know, even just silly little ones that, that happen quite a lot, that's happened a few times, you know, when, you, when you're when you cutting someone's hair and they come out and they bring the wife in or they bring the girlfriend in with them, they sat on the bench and the guy just sits down and it's the, it's the girl that's coming over that's telling him what he, how he wants his hair all the time and, and sitting down and all the rest of it. I'm thinking, I bet this guy doesn't go with his wife to the hairdressers and stand up from the waiting lounge in the, in the hairdressers and stand next to the hairdresser and telling, he, telling his wife how, how he's having it done all the rest of it. So it really, it really winds me up as well, especially when I'm trying to talk to the guy and she's just completely ignoring me and talking to him and telling him how he wants it done. So I, I, there was this woman, just, she kept getting up off the bench and she kept cutting, I was halfway through the haircut and she kept getting up and, oh, not to that. And I'm like, I'm not finished. I, obviously, I've, I've got this to do and I've, I've got that to do. Just, you know, that was being, trying to be patient. And I've, I have got like patience for days. I mean, it takes a lot for me to staff. And uh, after, but after about the fifth time during a haircut, which was now, you know, should have been taking me like half an hour, which was taking me about 45 minutes because she kept getting up and changing her mind and telling her what she wants to do. And the last time I said to her, look, just let me, let me finish and then, you know, carry on. Anyway, she got up again, didn't she? So I turned around, took the apron off put the apron on, I put scissors in one hand and the clippers in the other and I said, there you go, and sat down on the bench until she got up and left. 
<laughs> yeah, I've had that a couple of times, but I, I don't know whether whether I can go there with the story that we were talking about earlier, uh, Gary. But I, I, I'll try and see it in it, maybe in a bit more of a tame. Yeah, way. go on, get yeah. it in there. So, so there was uh, it was a it was a few years ago. It was the British Barbering Association competition. You you'll both remember this. Simon will, I know definitely, and I know Gary Wilson was talking about it earlier. And uh, I think I, was I, had, a I had about four or five of my guys in, in the final, a couple of the juniors, I think, and uh, two or three of the stylists. Anyway, we ended up walking away with, with uh, a first in two categories <laughs> and, uh, and a, a first and a second and a third in, in different categories as well. So we ended up with like three firsts and a second and a third. Like we walked away with everything. So we had a great night, and and uh, and pretty much everybody uh, was off the next day on the Monday that was there for the competition. But there was one guy who was supposed to be back at work on the Monday, and uh, so I said to him, "Look, as a as a as a gesture, you know, uh, we'll I'll give you the day off if you want. If not, got many people booked in." So uh, someone's trying to call me. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we're seeing you, Josh, on Facebook now. Yeah, I'm on Facebook. Yeah. Live. Well, do you want to know who it is? It's Robert Braves trying to call me. So, so, uh, so I said, Look, if you want, have, have tomorrow off and uh, enjoy the night out with us because we were obviously staying over for the, sh for the show because we were, we were working the show. And uh, anyway, he goes out and gets, gets on it. Like in a big way, he's got his cup and he's in the hotel and he, and the guys, are, some guy walked past and poured like nearly half a bottle of whiskey in it and he's drinking from it and all the rest of it. Anyway, my wife and I, because I think, oh, I don't know what was with me on it. Anyway, I went back to my hotel room and we were working the next day. Obviously, Simon, I think we were doing something with you there, I think, then, I think, if I remember rightly. And... Uh, Unbeknownst to me, he went on, carried on somewhere else in Birmingham, ended up back in the hotel room with three other lads who were, who were staying over for the night. He'd got like a, a three bedroom uh, room. So he was going to you know, park up somewhere on the bed. And uh, he ended up getting in such a mess that he woke up in the middle of the night uh, on all fours and it was coming out of both ends. He was stark bollock naked <laughs> on the hotel room floor. And uh, and then I think the following morning, the words were one of them, who, he, he tried to get back in bed with one of the lads, who then jumped out of the bed. And then he was, he was found in the morning, sat in the corner, with his knees up and his chest shaking, while the other lad who'd been on the floor, who, who, who'd, uh, who'd drunk far too much, had been on the bed. And there was feces and puke all over the bedroom walls and all over the bathroom wall and everything. They had to put him down in the bath and hose him down. Because then he didn't have any clothes with him at all. So the only one who had spare clothes with him was one of my lads who was six foot six. <laughs> and this guy's this guy about five foot four. So he had to put his, uh, his shirt and his trousers on. And his belt went around his waist about three times. He turned to the show and I was like, what the hell happened to you? And then obviously I got this, this, this story. Nice one. Sounds like a night out with Gary. Uh, excuse me, at least he didn't swap clothes. So, well, yeah. So I like swapping shirts with you. Anyway. I don't know about you swapping clothes. Needs, needs must, Gaz. Uh, Gary, I've, what, what about moonshine? Have you had any tonight? I like it when you go moonshine, so we don't speak to you all day Saturday. <sighs> got the moonshine here, baby. This is off my very good friend, <sighs> Frank Gambuza in Tennessee. <laughs> You have to drink it out of the jar. <laughs> it just looks aggressive. It, wait till you come here, I tell you. I've just, I, actually, I've spent all week doing your bedroom up. Well, I'll tell you what, you know now you're on this as well. I think when this is all done and it's safe to travel about and I can come over, I think it's definitely we'll do a Friday night together sat in your bar. Uh, from, we'll do it from one bar only. Because I want to keep this going on a Friday night, so uh, it's going to interfere with our social life. But hey, down the act for your moonshine, lad. You got to take a proper swig as well. None of that fanning around. Oh my gosh, how's he do it? I don't know. It's like paint thinners. <laughs> Whoa, baby, that's good. Like turps. So, Joe, 
um, if you had an opportunity um, to go on a, 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 a not a date, because I know you're very much in love with the beautiful Annabelle, but if you had a chance to have a, an ideal dinner date, who would it be with? Ideal dinner date? Um, oh, I've forgotten her name. What's her name? Your lady. Uh, actress. She was in those vampire films. What's she called? Uh, British Buffy. actress. Buffy. No, not Buffy. Buffy. Far flattier than that. Um, <laughs> are you talking about the, um, the Twilight franchise? No, no. Um, see, I think she was also in like Van Helsing as well with uh, that Australian geezer. Oh, what's her name? I fancied her for years. That's what I like to hear, because like Gary Jackson last week was saying, Oh, no, if I say tie to this, yeah, then what did I say to with my wife? And then I said, when she went out room, so who do you really want to isolate with? Or who do you really want to go to the date with? <laughs> Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale, right, okay. Kate Beckinsale. Right. Simon, Simon. Yes, Simon. yes, yes, by, yes, Gary. By the way, Gary is going to be really, because I know he's watching, and he's going to be really upset now. Why? With your take on his accent, because obviously the only Irish people you've ever come uh, across is somebody who wants to time back your drive. No, I did with Irish people all the time. I love it in Ireland. I got that Tourette's. I kind of try and do the Northern Irish accent to the sun, because when you get down to Cork, it is like being when Andrea's talking, she talks really quick, and I really struggle. But with Gary, I can really understand him. But it was great last week, and I said with Jordan. And it's like we're all having a, a drink tonight and all talking, but I can't wait that we're all together in an exhibition where these kind of meetings that we've had and these kind of cracks that we've had, I think when we all get together, it's going to make it even better when we're all live and we, we all have a drink together. I can't wait for that. It's going to be... Uh, <laughs> do, do, you know what, do you know what? I had a conversation today with a... Have a walk, have a walk with the dog and missus and kids and everything every day now. We do it every single time, seven o'clock. And we met a, a young barber who, who I taught. Uh, we met him and his wife and his young children. And it's what you take for granted, isn't it? What we take for granted earlier, before all of this, that's getting people talking, getting people, you know, I shake it. Whenever I meet anybody, I shake everybody's hand. Yeah. And just not to do that contact is, it kills me, you know. And um, to, to actually, I think, I think what this is actually going to teach everybody is not to take everything for granted. That's the main one for me. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think there are, are so many positives, I think, to come out of this, really. I mean, I, and, I, and I've been constantly, like, I don't think I've ever dwelt on the, on the negatives at all. And, and we've got some big negatives because obviously my shop is a, is a big old shop and the centre of Sheffield and my overheads are massive. And yes, we've got a grant through, but that doesn't cover us for a month in terms of, you know, what the rent and rates and what we would have lost is, you know, so we're still behind, in, you know, in a big way. But I've not, I've not really uh, thought about that much at all to be honest I, i've just been thinking about all the things that it's allowed us to do and, and take stock of but i also think there are a lot of other positives to come out of this not only from what you just said in terms of, of, of not taking things for granted having time to rethink and you know a, a pressing pause on a lot of things and have time to uh, get on stuff that you probably wouldn't normally do and uh, but i also think there's a lot of positives for the industry to come out of this as well and I know you touched on this before, Gary, as well. Uh, in terms of, uh, like... Simon, si hang on, hang on, hang on, Joff. Hang on, Joff. Simon, are you all right? Yeah, fine, thank you. Have you been sick or are you all right? No, I'm just getting the uh, toilet break. Have, 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 you, have, you, have you got off the horse now? Because you, you've been jigging about it all the time you've been on. Like. I just get overexcited when uh, Joff's talking, so... Um, it's good. Was I boring you? 
no, 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 John. No, no, no. I'm no. gone now because he, he kept getting out. He kept getting out of camera and everything. I thought he was. I thought he was ill or something. Well, sometimes I have a bucket next to me just in case I have to have too many shots. So it's like a spittoon in this bar. I, I, uh, listen, haven't you got the catheter? We said. No, 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 no catheter. And uh, no, I've, I've got. It's, it's funny today box. because I was on the Facebook Live and. Uh, my mum were emptying dishwasher and I could hear plates banging around. So I stopped the Facebook live and went, excuse me, the next room to me is making a little bit too much noise. I opened the kitchen door and went, can you stop emptying dishwasher? <laughs> <laughs> she's locked away in the bed. She's locked away on the side of the house in the bedroom. She didn't, she didn't come out. <laughs> Get in that bedroom. <laughs> sorry, Geoff, carry on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's all right. So... So the, the, the positives, I think, to, to come out of this for the industry is, is I think, first and foremost, it would be nice to see some regulation back, you know, and, and uh, in terms of, and I think it's going to make people think about cleaning of their equipment a lot more and people that weren't doing it. You know, I'm, you know I know you've probably, you've been barbering a, a long time, Gary, like, like me, you know, 30, 30 plus years. And I've always been really strict on hygiene and, and, and using gloves and, and, and things like that. And even when I was, was, was teaching classes and stuff, when we first started doing the academy, that, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, and, and, uh, and it, it, I was surprised at how many people that were coming on the shaving course that had done shaving, done another shaving course, but never been forced to wear gloves or never wanted to wear gloves. And I always just thought that was just like, it's such a ridiculous thing to do. And I always just, I had this little kind of speech that I did, which where I would go, right, okay, you know, we recommend you wearing gloves, but, you know, I know some of the people don't like wearing gloves, is there a show of hands? And there'd always be like, out of 10 people, there might be one person or something that, that always, there's always one person or maybe two that put their hands up and say, oh, I don't like wearing gloves, I don't like the feel, I can't get the feel on the skin. And I'm like, all right, okay, really, I recommend you do, but if you don't want to, that's fine. And then I'd get all the models in the chair because we'd supply all the live models and everything. I'd put them all in. And then whichever one out of the group didn't have the gloves on, I'd, I'd pull them over to one side and I'd say, oh, look, uh, the guy that you're shaving is one of our regular customers, comes in all the time, just so you know, because uh, he has to let us know, he's, he's uh, HIV positive. Watch how quickly they put a pair of gloves on. I'm like, why are you putting a pair of gloves on? I think you don't like using them. Well, you just told me that. I said, but how do you know? that that guy next to him hasn't got it and hasn't said anything or I've got something else. I was like, yeah. he hasn't, but I'm just proving a point. You know, and it's, and it's all these things and cleaning the equipment and everything. So I think that's, that's a, a good positive, hopefully, that will come out of that. But I think there's a lot of other things that have been happening in the industry with the boom of the barbershop and everything, but there's been so many barbershops opening around, and I'm sure you're the same, Gary, around you as well. You know, I think 25 in the last count in the last two years within quarter of a mile radius for me in the last two years alone. And the vast majority of those are cash only, you know, uh, you know, paying the uh, sovereign play farmers, you know, 60% or whatever. And you're always trying to compete with them and, 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 and getting other barbers in. And they're like, well, I can't work with you because you're only giving me X where I can get more from them. And I'm like, yeah, but we run our business properly, we're playing bat and we're cash and card, where a lot of these businesses aren't. And I think they're really going to be struggling at the moment because they'll have probably been stuffing more cash in the mattress under the bed than what they've actually been putting through the box. So 80% of what they're getting at the moment is probably 80% of, like, sod all. Yeah. So I think we've it's had... also going to be a bit of a culling exercise as well. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, I think, uh, do you know what, me and Gaz has been speaking about this and I listened to Gaz, Gaz has got six shops and, you know, look, Gaz is in a great position where he owns the premises and, you know, so he's had to take a, a, almost a, a rent relief from himself because he's not paying himself rent. But, you know, having to go to the bank and put all the wages in and stuff, he's done the right thing. So whatever's due to, to Gary and, and yourself and people have done the businesses right, like you've just bought a beautiful house in the country, you can't do that by taking cash. You've had to put and pay your dues, pay your taxes. Yeah. So when you went for a mortgage, you could get what you needed to get to move forward. You drive a fantastic car, Gary, it's same. He's got a beautiful place in Spain. Uh, if I'm honest, I don't know what the fuck I've done with my time, really, with you two. But, uh, excuse me, I drive a van. Yeah? 
I've seen you van actually. You cred when you came down to wall that day, drop when you came in your little van. Josh, just before you go, because we've got Anna coming up, and I'd love you to stay on and watch uh, Anna because she's going to give us some great insight to what's happening yeah. in China at the minute, where uh, obviously this will report that this C19 started from. But just so the people who are watching get a little bit to know about you, Josh, um, a little bit personal stuff, I'm just going to fire away five quick questions at you so if you can just give us some quick answers. Is that all right? I'll try. All right, favourite film of all time? Godfather Trilogy, that's easy. Godfather Trilogy. Favourite food? Uh, it's, a, it's a tough one now. Well, it's not tough, really, but Italian was always my favourite food. But, but since I, I changed my diet last, last October, I went vegetarian, so I've been veggie since then. Now I would say uh, katsu curry. Japanese, all that kind of stuff. Love that food. So we've got Joff sat here watching Godfather 1 or 2 or 3, sat with Kate Beckinsale eating katsu curry. So <laughs> what kind of music would you like to be playing? What's your favourite music? Music? Oh, I've got such a broad spectrum of, of music tastes. But uh, you've got uh, one play, you've got one, one album to play. You've just got one, one, one song to take with you for 10 days. One, 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 one album. Who's your favourite music? Right. Uh, well, the, the album I've been listening to a lot lately, well, the guy who I've been listening to a lot of, of, of his albums, back, back a lot of his albums, was a guy who I was, was fortunate enough to actually play in our shop a couple of years ago. Uh, he signed to Atlantic Records and he was promoting his new album and someone that was working for me at the time said, oh, he's looking for like, quirky places to to promote his new album and he's going to video it as he goes along would you what do you think and i said yeah sure i've never heard of this guy before never never knew what what he was about and he came and played in the shop and absolutely blew me away foy vance it's kind of like soul meets country type it's really yeah so okay and if it's so like we've vance got at the moment, we've We've got you sat eating castle curry with Kate Beckinsale, watching Godfather, listening to some soul kind of country music, yeah? Yeah. Which country would that be in? What's your favourite country? I think oh. I might like this one. It's going to be one of two places. Italy, and I, and I think if it was anywhere in Italy, it's going to be Sorrento. I've put that down on my pad here. Yeah. Uh, oh, and the other place would be... Uh, would be Dea in Mallorca, which is right up in the mountains where my wife and I got married. It's right up in the in the east coast of uh, of Mallorca, right up in the mountain range. It's absolutely beautiful, which is very much like Sorrento. I'm out It's just like the place. You know, you've been. There. And do, 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 about you. Do they say like me either? <laughs> Tell you what. Lots of limoncello. Well, that's it. I'm not going. Geoff, it's been a pleasure, bro. Geoff Davis from Savile Barbers. He's the Wall Men's Method principal educator, but he's a gent. He's well known all over the world. Um, it's great to have you on Barbers Arms, Geoff, for the first time. I sure we'll be speaking to you again during lockdown and, and past lockdown as well when we get back to normality and we, we keep these shows going. So, Geoff, thank you very much. We're going to get Anna Elliott, who's going to join us in now from Shanghai. Uh, but Josh, Josh. You, you were amazing. Thank Josh. you. Love, love you, mate. Yes, Gary, nice to see you and speak to you and have a drink with you too. Top love man, you, Josh. See, see you later. Cheers, Jen. See you later. Good night. Thank you, Josh. I shall continue to watch. Thank you, bro. Well, guys, that were um, that's nice, isn't it, Josh? I, I tell you what, you know, we're going to have to step it up next week. You can't carry on wearing your... You, you, um, Primark t-shirts and shit like that. You're gonna have to really fucking step it up now. We're gonna, you know, I'm gonna wear a shirt and tie next week. No, on my bottom end, just a shirt and tie. And I'm gonna try. Hang, and get hang hey, hey. <laughs> that, where do you get them gloves from? They're amazing. <laughs> Those are the new PPE gloves that we're expecting everybody to do it. So, guys, I'd like to introduce, and this is this is gonna be a, a, since we started this. I think for me. To get Anna on is going to be amazing because get your questions fired in. I've got loads of questions. I'm sure Gaz has as well. Uh, she's a great girl, originally from Scotland. Uh, she went out to China. She owns a dock salons out in China. 
three salons. Uh, the main ones are predominantly based in Shanghai, but she's going to give us now uh, a, a view of life after coronavirus. What has happened since they've opened back up? So if we can have Anna at Elliot on. Simon, just be careful as well. Remember, Josh still still listening, so don't don't say anything about him now. You know, that is suit or anything. I think Ross is going to supply us with some kilts when we go out on stage. <laughs> Ross, I'll tell you what, mate. I tell you what I fancy. This is what I fancy, guys. Black shirt, black tie, little black jacket, black kilt, black socks, and some nice little boots on. I think I'm gonna. If he supplies it, I will wear it to do a presentation in Scotland. Look it now. We've been locked down for three, five weeks. I want to get out there if it's a kilt. Hey, hey. kilt. We'll wear it as long as we wear nothing underneath. That's a That's true no Scotland. I love Commando. That's I'm it from then. Yorkshire. On. We're on. Anna, do we have Anna Elliott? Is she here? I'm here. Can you see me? Hey, my gorgeous friend from Shanghai. <laughs> how are you guys? Hi, Elliot. Hi, Anna. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Very well. It's a bit early here. Oh, and my laptop just fell, but we're good. It is early, darling. It's not like How are what you guys doing? Here it is four, 10 past four in the morning. In the morning. Yeah. Anna, if, I, if we start this, this interview off as well, if I can say to you, when you've worked with me either in China or you've worked with me in the UK, um, what is my favorite saying of all time? Um, I know what your favorite song is. I'm trying to. <laughs> no, no, no. The favorite saying, what do I say in our group, group meetings? And what do I finish off with by saying to everybody? Just get your clothes off. <laughs> we are, we are. Oh, global. Not local. And then. <laughs> Yay! There you go. We're global, not local, motherfucker. So here we are, we're going global with Barbara Arms. Here you are in Shanghai. <laughs> we've got loads of people who, if they're not even in life tonight, will be watching this over the next few days. So your words of inspiration now are going to give us some... You know, you sent me a message saying, in, in our group chat saying, look, you guys are going through what we've gone through for the last eight weeks. We want to know now what is happening. What happens when you get the, 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 the lockdowns lifted? Can you tell us in your own words what, what happens? I mean, when for us, we um, we had to apply to the government in order to be allowed to open again. So we had to apply to them. They then came in and did checks. So they just checked that we had um, temperature thermometers, um, checked that we all had masks. We had a, a supply of masks also for the staff to wear and be able to change regularly. Um, and we had a sign-in sheet um, and all this sort of stuff and then, you know, hand sanitizer everywhere, spray, you know, cleaning stuff everywhere. And once they had that, they were like, yep, you're good to go. So. And what's the general, you know, have you seen that most of your clients have come back? Is, is the salon really busy as, as it was before you had lockdown? Well, I, I know you guys were talking about that um, with Joss just there. Um, I mean, it's like, uh, I've talked to a lot of people about this kind of stuff and I think the first day that you're back, there is that like, yes, you know, your customers are desperate to get a haircut. They're coming in. It's busy. But that's the first day. Then there's the next day and the next day. And those days, that's those days are uh, certainly our first week, two weeks. We're pretty slow. Yeah. Um, I think as well, partly as well, like I heard you guys talking about, you know, it's not only about the staff being comfortable and ready to go. It's also about your customers. Are they comfortable? Are they, do they want to be around other strangers? Do they want to, you know, be in public? Do they want to take a train to get somewhere or take a, an Uber or, you know, a lot of people don't. And so there will be people that, you know, you'll lose to this because they'll, decide that it you know well my wife can do it or I can shave my head by myself or that sort of thing yeah. but I think uh people I think a lot of people just think it's going to be cues out the door and around the corner but at the same time you have to be realistic and realize that you know some people aren't just they're just not going to feel comfortable or feel safe so 
And how, how long have you been back trading? What, what's the days that you've been back? We've been about two months back. Right. Okay. Two. Yeah. Yeah, we that were closed. Long. We were closed for a month, and then because um, the Chinese New Year got extended. Um. So then, yeah, we've been back now two months. Okay. Yeah. And obviously, there's been no action from the wheat team out in China as yet. You've not done anything together as a team since before not lockdown. As a team. No, we've been doing live stream uh, haircuts. So we've been doing those quite regularly. We've done those a lot um, over the last few years anyways, but they're getting a lot more attention now. So, And they're kind of fun, you know, and we do it in the morning as well when the shop's not busy. So, um, And what's the... Um... It's good to have Ross Carter just joined us as well from Scotland and Marion and the team from Canada, they're just joining in to come and see what you've got to say, Anna. This is Anna Elliott, um, who has got salons in Shanghai. So we're just talking to Anna at the moment about life after C19 and um, getting back to normal. So in and around, because I've been to your shop, it's really cool. Yep. And we, we took we took me to that little bar next door and we went upstairs yeah, yeah. and it was just really, I had some nice bidet beers in there. It was really cool. Um, <laughs> And uh, how's Jane? Have you spoke to Jane? Jane's great. I love Jane. She's my, she's, yeah, she's, she's my right arm when it comes to wall China. She's amazing. <laughs> she's the best PA assistant I've ever, ever worked with outside of the UK. When you, whenever you travel abroad, this, this girl yeah. gets your, you, your itineraries to the minute and there's, nef yeah. there's, ne there's never, you know. She's also my drinking with... buddy too. So whenever we go on trips together, she's she's like pub beer. I'm like yes, I love this girl. <laughs> hey, you you guys as well. You, I, I use you as an example. Is that if we see a team that's grown the quickest in our global wheat teams at Wall, the Wall yep. China one is like second up there. I mean, you guys came selling a couple of years ago, and you're all watching us on stage. Yeah. And then when I came out there, it's like, wow, look at this. Everybody's wearing black suit. It's just like amazing walking on stairs. The impact was fantastic. Yeah. The crowd was superb. So look, you've, you've done, and you've been a massive, massive, massive part of that as well. What is it like in around like restaurants and bars? What, what's happening at that, uh, that end? So uh, the government have now laxed the rules and said that masks are not required, but now it's kind of a social thing. If you don't wear a mask, you're 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 gonna be ostracized, and you know, it's it's rude. It's just rude not to wear one. So everywhere you go, whether you take the subway or take a, an Uber, you know, I've I've it, when I leave the house, it's phone, keys, mask. Anna, yeah. Anna, so. not being funny or you know, from a a point of view of you know, we're not even there yet, but from from the from the government over here. It's, um, we're, we're looking at quite a long time for lockdown. You know, yeah. when you say about, you know, if you don't wear a mask or how's it, how's it affected you, your social life? How's it affected you with, you know, going out, just general, just generally going out and enjoying? Well, I, think, I think that's like one thing, kind of like, you know, the barbershops and with customers not feeling comfortable. There's definitely, I think this will not only change our industry, and change how we deal with our customers, but it will change society. I think this is like, you know, interactions when you meet people now, um, when you're out, you know, there's that moment of like handshake and then like, uh, 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 and some of even my friends, you know, you go in for a hug and you can feel them like, no, no thanks, you know. Well, well that, that's exactly, that's exactly what I was going to get to. Yeah, I'm and so kind of, we went, I think, we went out on, I think, um, I think our right. industry is is quite very touchy feely, aren't we? Yeah. And um, you know, so when when you see somebody, I, I if it's a father, I, I shake his hand. If it's a, a, a woman, lady, or whatever, you, you kiss them, don't you? You know, it, yeah. And it, it's almost it almost changing. It's almost changing. I, and I think it has to reach people. Yeah. And I think also just like even uh, last weekend, we went out to my friend's nightclub and, you know, it was the first big night that they've had in, you know, several months. And so everyone was excited and they were packed. And at one point I was like, oh, I feel uncomfortable. You know, yeah. all these people I don't know, they do do a temperature check at the door. And in Shanghai, you have to have a QR code on your phone. Um, so you get this code from the government that says you're green red or yellow so to order to go in you have to be green 
So mm -hmm. um, even with that though, at one point I was like, I don't really want to be standing here. And I like found a spot in the corner that, you know, sat there, had a couple drinks and, you know, it was better. But yeah, there was definitely that moment like, oh, happened yeah, I think I think that's that's a scary thing. Sorry, we've both been very rude. Uh, so I was going to offer you a shot, but it's a bit early for you, is it? I'm on the water, yes. <laughs> Gary, are you ready? Gaza? It's ne excuse me, it's, it's never too early. <laughs> you know what? No matter no matter what timeline you're on, it's never too early. Well, we've got Wayne joining us from Canada and Brian from Canada. So I, I would think in, in Canada now it's probably about would it be about three o'clock in the afternoon? It's drinking time. Well, he's in Montreal, isn't he? So it's uh, back and beyond that. It, if they don't, if, if they talk um, French there, so we won't worry about Brian. Shutting up the pap. Is that what yeah. you drink, Gary? <laughs> Anna, just a quick question here on this one. So, how many barbers do you have working for you? And and kind of like, how do what masks are you using? Because in the UK, the, the the I think the PPE ones that everybody's recommending, the nice thin ones, um, can last up to eight hours. So, how often do you have to change your masks? And how many staff I mean, do you employ? We, we have two shops in Shanghai, so we have 10 barbers altogether, um, plus each one has a receptionist. Um, and so we give, the, the government uh, recommends that you change your mask every three days, which All I know right, is okay. shocking to a lot of people, but I think, you know, we're not, when you're not in a hospital situation, to wear it, you know, regularly, it, it's actually, it's okay, I think. I don't know uh, how true that is, but you can also, uh, you can clean them as well. You can, a lot of people here, they wash them. Um, Anna, or, Anna. Or they'll put them in the oven. Anna, is that, is that because of cost or because? Um, it's also just uh, availability. You know, they're really, they're still quite lucrative um, to get. So, we kind of just follow the government recommendations. They said, you know, as long as the staff can change their mask every three days, then that's what we supply them. They then can also get their own masks. Um, most people do. A lot of, some people wear the cloth ones. I have mine here. I just have like the surgical one. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's pretty thin. Means as well, you can breathe. Some of the ones that are very restricted are to wear those eight hours a day cutting hair you kind of have to take it off and like just get a breath sometimes because you just you do feel um yeah it can be a bit claustrophobic and one thing i've noticed i was talking about this with you so i was just like as well you kind of have to rely on your your banter with the customers when you've got a mask on because <laughs> people can't read your facial cues and <laughs> yeah to see your eyes well my expression is in my mouth so people <laughs> you can't see my mouth you know you just see the eyes you know those yeah. little nuances are kind of lost so um you do have to kind of try a little bit harder to, <laughs> to get your chat game up anna, anna can i ju can i just ask a question sure do, or, or everything that's been put in place do you feel safe uh, in the shop and I, uh, like restaurants and stuff. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. So, so, so what, what's been put in place by government or what, what, what everything's been put in place. You think that's, you know, that that's good enough. Yeah. I mean, here as well in Shanghai, we've only had about 400 cases, um, and like three deaths. So yeah. the likelihood yeah. of people yeah so the likelihood of people of getting it i've never really felt scared of getting it i've been scared of the social implications that we've seen you know restrictions and that sort of thing um so, so where was the biggest death then was that in the place where he started in Wu in wuhan yeah wuhan so yeah. how many people was reported to or do you not know them stats how many people like in england in, we get in wuhan at the time i think it was like three or four thousand they've now said it's probably closer to eight I mean, it's China. You don't. You're never really gonna know the the total numbers. Um, but well, well, Anna, from from our point of view, it's um, at the minute. I mean, I I don't keep a check, but 
19,000. We're, 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 we're verging on 20,000 now deaths. And, and that's UK total? Well, that's what's reported from hospitals. People have died in hospitals with it, but the older generation in nursing homes, you could probably add another 10 to 15,000 on, on lost souls on, on this one. So, um, look, in England, I think we average around about between 1,500 and 1,700 deaths per day anyway of different causes or whatever. It'll never come out because there's lots of PR, there's lots of press for people wanting you to stay in and do the right thing. Um, sorry, I've got a call coming in. Um, but... Um, you know, it, we'll never get to know the proper stats, but we just know what we're getting told. So, look, it's pretty scary, you know, and, and yeah. we are locked down, but I don't think our lockdown has been as strict as what yours was. I don't know. I feel like we actually got off kind of light, you know, um, for like you were saying, like in Wuhan, where the where it started, the the government restrictions were like they are everywhere else. Like people could not leave the house. <laughs> For us in mm. Shanghai, we we could. I, I have a dog, so we could walk the dog. We could go around. But at one point, they started closing off all the lanes, all the a lot of roads. So there was just nowhere to go, and nothing was open. Nothing was open, so you couldn't. There was nowhere to nothing to do, anyways. You know. Yeah. So we were just forced, kind of, in lockdown, just because there was nothing else. There was nothing so, to do. So, so you know, I'm just get just try and get my head around this. So in Shanghai, you, you haven't had as much as in Wuhan. No. No. So, so you, Shanghai uh, is the equivalent of our London, isn't it? Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. And I think also, you know, I, I don't know, again, it's hard to know how true it is, but with the masks, I think the fact that everybody wears a mask, literally everybody wears a mask, I think it has slowed the infection rate in Asia. You know, if you look at the, the numbers, in Europe or whatever, you know, I think, I think it makes a difference. So. Yeah, I think we've been all looking when, when we look at the wall global root WhatsApp, I always look to what you're saying because obviously you're in front of us with it, uh, all of it. And uh, I think now speaking to you like face to face uh, virtually, um, it, it seems to think that I think some other countries now are having it a lot worse than what China had. Definitely. I think we were led to believe that China were the epicenter of it all, and you had more deaths than everybody else. But and I, I think, think I think it was just naive of everyone to think that it wasn't going to spread, you know. And we didn't expect yeah. nobody expected it to spread either. So you know, I think um, the precautions that could have been taken weren't taken. And now that I know the U.S. is, um, my sister and my mom live in Houston, and they've been told they have to wear masks now in public from Monday. I think so. Only yeah. now, you know. So, Anna, so, so, you know, from a point of view of you doing what you do in the barbershop, do you have to wear, every, is everything disposable now? Is it disposable gowns, towels, masks, gloves? We, we um, the masks are mandatory for, I, we've said, told all the staff must wear it at all times. We had one guy kept slipping it over his nose or under his chin and, I had to give him a verbal warning because he just wasn't uh, wasn't following the rules. Uh, one guy wears gloves all the time, every day, everywhere he goes, you know, he's got gloves on. I just, we keep hand sanitizer everywhere. So um, we do that and then we do the temperature checks and then we have a QR code. Um, what, what about, what about what's the QR code? This like, it's a, the government issued code that you get that's red, green, or blue, uh, red, green, or uh, yellow. Um, okay. We, the first month we didn't do any shaving. So we had no hot towels um, just for having, you know, A, the close contact, but also having wet towels, you know, um, are more likely to attract germs. But now with hair washing and stuff, you know, we just use it once and uh, wash them anyways. So, uh, in terms what, of just what, what, stuff, yeah, we're just, it's only- What about, what, what about, what about gowns? Do you use one gown for every client and then they wash or disposable or? Um, no, just, yeah, just uh, maybe two or three customers and then change it. We haven't been super strict on that part as well um, because we you know with a neck strip and things, plus then we, we will clean the chairs, we clean the surfaces, you know, I think the, 
the, ha the arms armrests of the barber chairs are quite important thing that people kind of forget as well. So I uh, make sure to clean those. Then it's doorknobs and toilet door handles and things like that, you know, just keeping, keeping those clean constantly. Yeah. You can see as well, obviously, the effects of like things like what's happened, what you're doing in the government. So the government would enforce some of this on you, Anna? Did, did you get like emails or did they come in and tell you that this is what you have to do or is it something Yeah, they, that... they contacted our general manager and said like, yeah, you must have the temperature check. You must have the, um, we had a sign in sheet in the beginning as well before the QR code came out. So we knew, you know, if there was for any, you know, reason an outbreak or something, we'd know who was in at what time and, you know, their phone number, their contact information. And we asked them, had they traveled outside of Shanghai in the last two weeks? If they had, we'd have to say no. If they had a, te you know, a high temperature, also we'd have to say no, you can't come in. Yeah, so, so that's, that's good to know. Because at the minute, we're, we, we, we're guessing a lot. And a lot of the guessing is being collated by things like the BBA and us at Wall and, and, and other associations putting the, you know, what we think we should have, disposable, ga yeah. Gary's going down the road, that, you know, with disposable gowns, disposable aprons, masks, gloves. Uh, you know as well, obviously, by uh, some of the way that we cut, if people have to wear gloves, cutting with clippers is a lot easier than cutting with scissors. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do some tutorials on that in the next couple of weeks coming up as well. Um, and you can see, obviously, one of the things I would always advise you as well is if you've watched Gary tonight drink moonshine, you can have see the effects of moonshine drinking, where it does to his speech. You can see that, can't you? It's coming out. You can also clean with moonshine, I think, right? <laughs> yeah, obviously. You can shave with it. You can paint with it. Clean your car with it. Um, I don't know about you guys, Gary. Did you see that today? Did you see some of Trump's um, comments what? about it can be real detergent or something like no. that? No, is it real? Did he really say that, Gary? Did you see it? Yeah. What did you think? I think all you need to do is drink moonshine. I think you're right there. Actually, <laughs> kill everything. Oh I, my god, he's gonna have a distillery I, doing Gaza's moonshine. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got a lot of friends in um, Georgia and a lot of friends in Tennessee and I tell you what, we're very healthy people drinking moonshine. <laughs> I'll take your word for it when I come over. You're gonna get me bollocks on that, I know you are. Anna, <laughs> you, funny stories then. Um, we ask all our guests to come on. We've got some questions for you, but some funny stories that's happened either with clients in China or when you've been doing some of your stuff when you've been traveling. I'd like you to stay away from the funny story when I was doing that big motivational speech when we were doing presentation skills. And as I came around from the desk, I tripped over the wire. And I, <laughs> Gary, I went down in slow motion. I went down in the installments. I was trying to keep myself up. And I literally just fell and just rolled in front of everybody. Yeah, Imagine it was great. Yeah, very graceful. Very, very, very not graceful, like a little info. <laughs> um, so any funny stories you've got, Anna, that you can share with our uh, viewers? Um, we did have a guy get arrested once <laughs> during that a haircut. Not. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, plain clothes, you know, young guys didn't look like police officers just suddenly stormed the shop at one point. I tried to be the boss and tell them to get the fuck out and got a police badge th shoved in my face and was like, oh, please go ahead, do what you need. <laughs> <laughs> and that was in your salon? Yeah. The one yeah. I've been into as well? Yep, same one, yep. I still have the recording wow. from the CCTV because it's hilarious. <laughs> well, Not for the guy, do unfortunately. Know, do you know what as well is, um, I, 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 Gaz, we, we did a big thing out there with the guys out in China and uh, one, of, one of part of the presentation skills uh, is that we all do, uh, you have to tell a personal story. I'm not going to ask anybody to do that tonight. But these personal stories, it has to be something because we have to build the team up. When, you, when you're out with each other, you're traveling, you're doing big shows, you've got to understand each other. So it's not like, oh, I like to go fishing at weekend or um, I've got a, a collect, uh, you know, I collect top trump cards. Something personal that's happened to you, but not too heavy. When we did the one in China, it was literally like Jerry McHale. It really was. I was on, <laughs> I was on Valium afterwards. Uh, was, everyone uh, was crying as well. Every, everybody was crying. I'm, I'm like, Laura walked in, I was director of education at that time for a while, and she'd done some interviews. She walked in, everybody's in tears, buckets of tears. Yeah. 
I'm sat there with some Kleenex just sobbing my heart out. She what the fuck's asking in East Brooklyn, morning, everybody, <laughs> training everybody to present on stage and to be fantastic. And everybody's yeah. cracking up, but you, you understood why we did that. Everybody's got each other's backs now. When you go out, you know a little bit about each other. And yeah. uh, that, that's, that's really, um, you know. So, you know, okay, not from funny stories, but generally living as a Scottish lady and um, doing, done really well in China. You're fantastic. You've been fantastic for us as well. I thank you for that. I loved it having <laughs> you over in um, the UK last year. And we, we will be together again. You know that, don't you? We will be in so. Chicago. 100%. <laughs> What's life generally? Because we've got some Scottish people listening in now. What's life generally like in China? What what's the differences you've noticed? I mean, it's pretty like Shanghai is pretty um, metropolitan, you know. So um, as a foreigner, I don't stand out like a sore thumb. I do stand out like a sore thumb being pale and blonde, and have yeah. tattoos. <laughs> that for them is more intriguing than my foreignness. Um, and of course, being pale in China, they, they're like, wow, your skin is so beautiful. People always tell me it's just because they want to be pale. Um, but <laughs> daily, daily life is pretty easy. You know, we've got it pretty good here. Great food. Shanghai has some of the best restaurants in the world. Um, I ride my bike everywhere. I take my dog in a backpack to the shop. You know, the hours that I work are pretty flexible. And yeah, it's, life is pretty, pretty good. Can't complain. Yeah, the- we had a, a fantastic train journey together, didn't we? For about four yeah. hours from Shanghai up to, to Ningbo. Ningbo. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the train were amazing. To be fair, it was like yeah, you and you train. didn't get the first class ticket, which was a whole like four pounds more expensive. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously, you know, I, I look after the uh, the dollars for our whole family. Um, so yeah, but we had a good time when we got back to the train station, which was amazing. And then we all headed upstairs, and I think me and Lauren. Been a little bit careful with food, so we we banqueted on uh, McDonald's. And yeah, beers. and then we ran down the and got uh, some beers. And finding cold beers in China, believe me, is a is a tough feat. But we found them and we drank them all. <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Anna, you've been amazing. I'm sure our viewers who will listen in either tonight or over the weekend, some of the stuff that you've been able to give us, giving us hope, you've given us inspiration. Everybody's a little bit flat over here. You know, a bit worried, yeah. um, but you've you've gone through it, you know. And uh, I think, you know, from my point of view, I don't know about you guys, but I feel so much more upbeat now after speaking to Anna and, and Joff tonight. Is that from Joff's point of view, giving us like, you know, busy one of the busiest salons in the UK, you know, what what his views are going to be for the future. But then listening to Anna and, and what she's gone through and come come out the other end, how do you feel, guys? I just love you, baby. <laughs> that moonshine's fantastic. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. No, yeah, I mean, I think I think we really need to connect with everybody who's around the world. As we're talking now, I'm getting um, connections with uh, the guys in Atlanta. I mean, Shannon Thomas, he's a great guy, absolutely fantastic. Works for Van Michael. They great. They've gone back today, and they're all really I mean the petition to go back I don't know if it's the right thing but in Georgia at the moment the governor has said we've got to go back so but Van Michael is a fantastic company I'm sure they'll look after all their staff I mean it's a 28 million dollar company it's, it's absolutely unbelievable and looking at um, the feed as you as you've been talking I'm not being disrespectful but as you've been talking Brian's <laughs> Brian's been giving us loads of uh, stick on on the uh, on Facebook as well. So we love Brian anyway, don't we? Because we've been we met him in um, Chicago and everywhere. Chicago, else. yeah, yeah. So Anna, we like to know a little bit about. We did this with Joff. We do it with all our guests. We just like to know a little bit about you personally as well. It's been fantastic having you on. We've loved having you to give us your inspiration of what's coming out of Shanghai. And uh, I'll, I'll be speaking to you next couple of days anyway, and hopefully, if I don't see you this year um, at any of our summits, we'll be definitely be doing something in 2021. I don't believe yeah. it's going to be your year, that. So, quick fire questions. Favourite film of all time? Uh, Dark Passage, Humphrey Bogart, Lauren Bacall. Woo! D. That's Favourite. older than you. 
Uh, favorite food? Uh, Japanese. Japanese. So watching you know, Humphrey Bogart film, eating Japanese food. Who would be your ideal dinner day? Who would be the favorite person for you to sit across from while you're watching your film and you're eating your Japanese food? Um, might be a, a bit of a, an unusual one, but Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett, okay. <laughs> yep. So we've got Kate Blanchett eating Japanese food, watching an Humphrey Bogart film. And what kind of music would you, what's your favorite music? Um, I'm a kind of old school girl, so Smith's Joy Division, those are kind of oh, my yeah. go-to. I'm going to, you know, yeah, I love yeah, Smith's I mean, Morrissey. You can't see my hair, legs. but I went for the Chelsea recently, so. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so we've got, um, we've got that. So what's your favorite country that you visited? What's your favorite destination? What, 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 which country do you love? I will say Japan. Japan is amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah, I went amazing. there last, um, not this past Christmas, one before, went to the um, Nagano, where they had the 1980, 1998 Winter Olympics. Uh -huh. And they have like still all the memorabilia. They had um, all the onsens, the food is amazing. Just such a great place, yeah. Good, excellent. Well, listen, keep in touch with me on our global WhatsApp group. It'd be nice for you to share something like this as well. If you could do a video for every all them guys that, uh, there as well, that yeah. uh, uh, from from those at Wall as well as the BBA. We know we wish all our we team members. We had all the Indian guys on today. Which was yeah, great, but we I wish love all our <laughs> stay safe, babe. And uh, it's been amazing to have you on Barbara's Arms. You've been so informative for us. <laughs> I know you've got up early as well. I'm gonna let you get away with drinking water, but don't you know your life a little different now and again? <laughs> I'll make it up to you, I promise. <laughs> but thank you very much, Anna Relly. Very everybody. welcome. Thank you for having me, guys. Great to meet you, Gary. <laughs> Love you, baby. Yes, what an amazing evening. I mean, it's like 20 to 10, it's flown. It just seemed two minutes ago since director Trevor was saying, right, you're going live in five. That's been great. Have you enjoyed it? Fantastic, mate. Well, always do. Always love, love, love your inspirational talk. I, I've learned again tonight. Look, I've, I've got my notepad here and it's full of notes. And, and I, what I, I said to somebody the other day, I've got my notepad with me all the time. What, what do I get out tonight? Yeah, I, I need to, I, I've learned about what's happening in China. Um, you learn more off Joff. But, you know, one of, one of the things is, look, we have a big saying at Wolf, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. We have to uh, make sure you've got a plan for everything. Look at Joff. He planned even this interview tonight. Look how he dressed. Look how he, he prepared for it. That's what it's all about. When you get back, if you put that effort into what he's put an effort into an interview tonight, you know, prepare yourselves. Get yourselves ready in these next couple of weeks because look at these two guys that have been on tonight. You know, international superstars, one out of Shanghai, one out of Sheffield. You know, uh, I've, I've been blown away with it. I've really enjoyed tonight's um, guests that we've had on really enjoyed it i have as well the main thing is as well it's about just looking to the future all the time and you've got to definitely it, it's not about um you know being on the negative side or anything but looking at the bba you all we all have to do the same thing but I can i just finish with one more thing as well so oh, you can as we've just been talking, and I, I'm going to phone you anyway, but um, just one more thing is we're on about the BBA competition that's it's whatever you want to be, and anybody who wants to join the, the BBA is going to, into um, bba.com. We're there all the time, letting you see everything that we, we need to see, and we go to there be there every week anyway. No, I think it's, uh, yeah, I've really, look, these last three weeks for me, uh, Friday's my busiest day with interviews and stuff like that, but I really look forward to like eight o'clock on a Friday night. Um, and I'm hoping that our viewers do as well. I think it's been amazing that we, you know, we, we, we've got people viewing in and I know over the weekend we get a lot of views as well. So look, it's brilliant. And, and obviously for all you younger uh, members out there and younger viewers that's coming in, you know that moonshine's definitely the future. 
it can take the strongest men that I've ever known drink. It can take them out after a couple of swills. So it's the main, <laughs> it's the main drink. Don't drink anymore. Save it for me now. You're the one. So listen, for everybody that's listening, I will make a pledge and a promise to everybody. I will drink moonshine, three shots, with my kilt on, full regalia, in your house, and we'll do a Barber's Arms live. I can't get away from it then. You'll have to keep passing me the moonshine. And this is a date. Ross is going to be with us. Yes, he'll love that, Ross. Ross will definitely. He's, he's already said to me, sorted me out with all the gear. Um, I hope it's not a biz because he's trimmed right down. I'm going to be fly, walking around in a bastard life through a kilt. Can't be having that. Um, <laughs> guys, I'll, I'll, I'll say a few things to finish off with, then I'll pass it over to you, mate. Listen, guys, shit news today when you're reading the Sun newspaper, you listen to politicians, and, and you know, let's listen to our own government. Let's just listen to what's happening in the UK. Stay safe, stay at home. Don't piss her off this weekend with weather being nice. Stay at home. No garden gnome in it. No going out in groups. No partying in it. Let's not have a cheeky barbecue. Let's not put us all back. Big percentage of us are staying at home, doing the right thing, getting it in, then we can get this country back on its feet. And this industry, you know, you're hearing it from people who have gone through it now. We will be back. That is, a, that is a one definite that we can say. We will be back. We don't know when yet, but we are going to be back. And so keep tuning into the BBA and Barber's Arms. Keep looking on the, the wall website for different stuff that we're doing as well. And I'm sure that all of us together is going to be a bright future. Gaz, over to you, mate. Thank you, baby. Thank you very much. All I can say is it's the Barber's Arms. Every Friday, 8 o'clock, let's do it. We keep everybody positive. Stay safe. Stay safe, guys. Adios. See you guys. See you next week, man. Love you, bro.